Spirituals, Songs of Slavery. Spirituals are the religious folk songs created and sung by African Americans in slavery. These songs combine the heritage of African culture and the experiences encountered while in bondage. They came to become the signature music of America, mixing with many other cultures, from Chinese to Indian to Spanish, etc., to create the modern music of the day. The first spirituals originated near the end of the 18th century during the slavery period until the 1860s. In Africa, music was part of their everyday life. It ranged from significant things like work or trading to important events such as birth or marriage. In America, they mix African tradition with the American lifestyle and religion. Spirituals functioned on many levels for enslaved Africans. The spirituals are like the poems of Langston Hughes. They have many meanings. While these songs express deeply held religious convictions, they also reflected deep longings for freedom and often held secret messages. When the niggas go around singing, steal away to Jesus, that means they're going to be a religious meeting that night. The masters before and after freedom didn't like them religious meetings, so us naturally slips off that night, down in the bottoms of somewheres. Sometimes I sing and pray all night. These songs also understood that violence is wrong, and that one must never mistreat others, and that they too should be able to take part in the tree of life. Principles of democracy were evident, such as honor God and country. The slaves also felt that they should be included as Americans, and they expressed it through their spirituals. Spirituals became a part of everyday life. Sing. I say they did sing. Sing about the cooking and about the milking and sing in the field. Here's the spiritual Follow the Drinking Gourd and its translation. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is waiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. The first two lines mean that when it is almost spring, follow the drinking gourd, which is a big jipper. The Underground Railroad suggested that slaves left in winter to cross the Ohio River when it was frozen because it was too wide and too swift to swim in the summer, or spring, or fall. The second two lines mean that if you were to follow the drinking gourd, that they will eventually meet a guide. The river bank makes a very good road. The dead trees show you the way. Left foot, peg foot, traveling on, follow the drinking gourd. This whole verse taught the slaves to follow the bank of the Tombagee River. There would be markings of a left leg pegfoot on dead trees, indicating this river and not others that flow into it. The river ends between two hills. Follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side. Follow the drinking gourd. This told the slaves that once they reached the headwaters of the Tombagee, they should continue north over the hills. They should then travel north along the new river, the Tennessee. Where the great big river meets a little river, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting to carry you to freedom, if you follow the drinking gourd. This verse told the slaves that the Tennessee joined the Ohio River. They were to cross this river, and on the north bank, there would be a guide from the Underground Railroad to send them to freedom. The spiritual's popularity was on and off after slavery and up until now. They were not popular until the Harlem Renaissance, which was 1917 to 1935, where they flourished. Almost whole celebrations were dedicated to the spirituals. After the Renaissance, their popularity de decreased. It was revived again in World War II, where the songs were used to uplift, inspire, and motivate the soldiers in hard times. Their popularity was brought up again during the Civil Rights Movement to support the efforts of the workers. The spirituals then made their way worldwide in other places struggling for freedom, such as Russia, China, Eastern Europe, and South Africa. Although the spirituals are not alive today, I believe their essence lies in gospel music.